Alright guys and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about why Death Knights should level up in Unholy Spec, not Blood Spec. You're probably thinking I'm absolutely insane for saying that because blood is great for leveling due to its survivability and AoE damage. And to be fair, if you're very new to playing a Death Knight I would recommend leveling in blood, but you really don't need to. The survivability that blood provides is great, but it's definitely overkill for solo leveling. And the AoE damage output of the Unholy Death Knight is absolutely bonkers to the point where you'll be killing mobs so insanely fast that they'll die before they're any real threat to you. Plus you're more than capable of keeping yourself alive with Blood Presence and with Death Strikes. So let's talk a little bit about what makes Unholy so good for leveling. Just to clarify guys, this is not a set in stone guide. This is a very early speculative theory crafting video because at the end of the day the beta is not out yet. First of all, I want to go through the talents that I prefer to leveling. I've done a lot of sim testing, I've also done a lot of in-game testing on private servers, and this is definitely what I prefer to go for. So, let's take a look at Tier 1. We have Vicious Strikes. That 6% crit chance is very nice because of a little talent down here. Let's jump ahead a little bit. Wandering Plague. Basically, all of your dots, based on your crit chance, will cause additional damage to all the targets within 8 yards. So basically, dots they start to erupt and do more damage, so any chance we can get crit from talents is very useful. Virulence here is kind of nice, but I have enough hit chance with my gear, so I didn't really feel the need for it, so I went down into Anticipation instead. Next, if Epidemic is going to increase your dot duration. With this talent, basically you won't need to refresh your dots before all of the mobs die. Mobility here is fairly decent, but it's only really a single target DPS increase because it's increasing death card damage. We don't really care so much about single target DPS increase in talents, but we picked them because there's just simply nothing better to get. And reduced cooldown on mobility is nice if you're going to be doing multiple pulls very quickly. Ravenous Dead, simple DPS increase, and on your Ghoul. Now we have Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion is one of your biggest damage dealing abilities on these AoE pulls. We will be dumping all our runic power on Corpse Explosion, but to be honest you'll be generating so much runic power because you're killing mobs so fast, you will start to cap our runic power. And the cooldown on Corpus Explosion is 5 seconds, so you will need to fill in with death coils from time to time. Now, Necrosis, like I've done tests, it's just such a meagre little DPS increase, it's not even worth talking about. To put it in perspective, on some pulls, my death and decay is doing 27,000 damage, and then Necrosis is barely doing 1k damage. That's why I'd rather put points into something like Anticipation. We get on a Pale Horse here, another great talent that makes Unholy much faster than Blood is because you simply have 20% faster movement speed while on your mount. Blood Caked Blade now, it's the same story as Necrosis, it doesn't really do a lot of damage in the grand scheme of things, that's why I'd rather opt for more utility talents. We get Knight of the Dead and Master of Ghouls to make our pet permanent. Unholy Blight here, we're just picking it because this is a better DPS increase over putting points in Blood Caked Blade and Necrosis according to the sims that I've done. Because you have to, you know, put quite a lot of talent points into Necrosis and Blood Caked Blade, you have to put one in here, and then you're also sacrificing utility talents by specking into Necrosis and Blood Caked Blade, so that's why I just don't bother with them. Impurity, just a simple flat DPS increase. Dirge is very nice for generating a lot of runic power. Desecration, what it does is puts an AoE slowing effect on the ground whenever you Plague Strike, so you're going to do that at the beginning of your pulls. It's not absolutely essential to survive, but it's kind of nice being able to kite a little bit for when you do actually need it. Now, we do go for Reaping, so in a playstyle you're going to use a Pestilence and a Blood Boil and then turn those two Blood Runes into Death Runes, which can be then later used on an entire Death Strike, so it is quite nice to have. And overall, you can pop three Death Strikes in a row. Next we have Improved in Holy Presence. I just have that so you never need to go in Holy Presence while you're in an interior location. You can just stay in the Blood Presence just for the convenience and being able to move around faster is generally just a nice thing. Don't really bother with Desolation or Ghoul Frenzy here because these are more, again, single target DPS increasing talents. We'll go for Bone Shield. Very simple, nice slight DPS increase and damage reduction ability which is nice when you're pulling mobs up together. Now we have Crypt Fever. So these are the key talents, Crypt Fever, Ebb and Play Bringer, and Wandering Play that just make Unholy Dots absolutely pump, and it's ultimately what makes Unholy better than Blood for leveling. 
We're not actually going to go for Scourge Strike since we don't really use it. I mean, you can put a point in, into it if you want, if you're going to do more dungeons, but we're always Death Striking, so I don't actually use it. And then we put our last points into Rage of Rivendare. It's going to increase your dark damage by an extra 10%, so you really cannot complain at that. And then you put one into Gargoyle, use that on cooldown, and obviously use it when you're taking on elite enemies. Now, I like to off-spec into the Blood Tree. I have compared it to off-specking into the Frost Tree, and it's the simple fact is that Blood Tree and Bladed Armor just provide more damage, more runic power, and therefore even more damage than off-specking into Frost does. The Blood Tree Talent practically gives you infinite runic power. You always seem to be capping on runic power because you cannot simply use it fast enough. So you're always going to have enough runic power for spamming corpse explosion. I went for blade barrier here instead of subversion because I don't use blood strike, skirt strike or heart strike or blood throat. So it's just a junk talent really. And when I'm putting my last points into bladed armor, then from here, I have the urge to go for center blood, but like I've explained, I'm always just generating way too much runic power anyway, so from here, it's really up to you. You can go for the survivability of rune tap if you are struggling to survive on your pulls, but if not, I would just max out Dark Conviction because again, that is going to increase the proc chance of Wandering Plague, not Wandering Plague. And then my personal preference would be to just spend my last few points in Vendetta because Rune Tap, it is going to use a rune, doesn't use a frost rune by the way, the database is bugged that it uses a blood rune. And honestly, it's just like an extra button to press and I can't really be bothered with it. And the healing from it, I just don't think is needed. I think it's a bit too overkill. Whereas Vendetta is just like a nice little thing to have. To be fair, you can put these last points wherever you want. You may even want to put some points into Runic Power Mastery because you do generate a lot of Runic Power when you do an AoE pull. So that might also be quite nice to have. When it comes to Glyphs, you can actually only get two major glyphs while leveling and I've gone for Icy Touch and Death and Decay. Most of your damage is going to come from Icy Touch and especially Death and Decay so you may as well buff the damage of those abilities. Then for minor glyphs I go for Corpse Explosion, again you're going to be using that a lot. Pestilence to increase the range of it. This is slightly useful, normally the mobs are so clumped together you don't really need it but it's just nice to have just in case a mob isn't that close to you. Then Raise Dead for the convenience of not having to have a consumable every time you want to raise dead. So let me show you the kind of gear that I've actually got equipped on my Death Knight for these tests. This is what I consider to be fairly realistic for any Death Knight to obtain if we get a slightly longer pre-patch than the last time, like a month long. If we get a two week pre-patch, you might not be able to get as good gear as this. But what it is, is it's half heroic dungeon gear and then half tier 4 raiding gear with some good badge gear. For instance, things like the Blade of the Harbingers from the badge vendor in the Isle of Queldenas. There's some epic pieces like from Magister's Terrace, a lot of it like Doomplate is from Heroic Dungeons, some of this is from like Gruul's Lair, but only a couple pieces from Gruul's Lair, a couple of rings from Karazhan, and then I gave myself some pretty bad average trinkets. So I'm going to do a big pull here in a place just near Utgard Keep where there's, there's loads of small enemies and small camps and also lots of pet enemies as well to like accumulate the amount of mobs that I'm dealing with here. Most of the time you are just going to pull on your mount and then try and get some extra mobs like I do here with a death grip which might pull on like an extra pack. All I'm doing, getting my dots up, waiting for them to clump up, cheeky pestilence, death and decay and I'm spamming corpse explosion, death strike and rune strike and as you can see the mobs, they are really just melting without me being in that much trouble and plus I have more than enough runic power. So this is what recount looks like. As you can see, the majority of the damage is coming from Death and Decay, Corpse Explosion, Wandering Plague, and then your dots. Looks like I actually need Death Strike once, but I did Rune Strike quite a lot. The useful thing about having that dodge talent in the Unholy Tree is it's going to increase the proc chance of Rune Strike to the point where it's pretty much always active. This is the amount of damage I took, total of 7k damage, and then I actually healed for 3k with just one Death Strike and 1.2k with Blood Presence and also a cheeky Unholy Strength proc. So as you can see, Unholy is more than capable of doing really big pulls without the survivability of a Blood Spec. I didn't even pop my Trinkets on that pull and didn't even pop any cooldowns like Icebound Fortitude or Empire Rune Weapon for more Death Strikes. In fact, I've just realized I forgot to Blood Boil as well, so I could have killed the mobs even faster. 
But anyway guys, that's going to be the end of the video there. Let me know in the comment section what kind of builds you like to go for when you're leveling in the Death Knight. Because at the end of the day, like I said, this isn't a set in stone guide. I'm not saying this is the best way to spec and the best way to play. And obviously, when we get the beta out, I will eventually make a more precise guide. But anyway, my name is Goblin. To my next video, ciao.